<sighs> Hello everybody and welcome to my Friday Night Smackdown review. A lot of things going on in this show tonight, which I don't even know what's going on in this show. But hey, we're still building Survivor Series slash War Games and stuff. So uh, Survivor Series continues with Smackdown tonight. And I don't know, it's almost like a, I would say it was a tale of two different shows. But on the first half, it looked bad. But in the second half, it got a little bit better. So let's see what we saw from here in Smackdown tonight, huh? We kicked off the show with... um. Baron Corbin, the king himself. King Corbin, who had his grand entrance in Philly tonight, uh, or they were in Philadelphia, who came up in a giant platform, like a almost like some type of Roman king or something, and these guys were carrying him all the way down to the ring as he was sitting on a throne with a big platform, and, you know, he just had people walking for him. It reminded me of Charlotte back in Hell in a Cell. But um, they were all carrying him out there as he was the king, um, pretty much he was in the ring with Rude and Ziggler then, as Corbin pretty much started talking about he is a king and calling people peasants, it looked like, which the fans began to boo, and he talked about how Reigns is not only but a shell of a man, and he beat him last week, that it's not Roman's yard, but it's now Corbin's kingdom, and he dubbed himself the captain of Team SmackDown, but he said there are two weak links on the team, uh, Mustafa Ali and, uh, Shorty G, uh, Chad Gable, whatever you want to call him there, because of the team SmackDown consists of Corbin, Roman, Braun Strowman, and um, Al Mustafa Ali, and uh, G right there. <laughs> um, pretty much being part of the team. Dolph Ziggler pretty much says that the only reason why they made it to the team because uh, they were running with Roman Reigns. Rude says that they were rectified that mistake. Corbin called out Roman Reigns. Next thing you know... Roman's music hit, but then what happens? I'm sure people are. I could see people right now either turning the channel or getting very pissed off about this show at the same time because what happens? His music plays, and then you got this dog and this now other like logo with this dog with like this little puppy with hair, and and you see like the, the whole song. Then it, then it, then I wish I had my dog here to, um, you know, bark for you because that, that would be the sound of Roman's theme right now. And it was a man dressed as a dog. We don't know who this guy was in the dog suit, but there were dog sounds in there in this entrance. He was the big dog. Not by Cole saying it, but, you know, um, Corey Graves saying that. As I said, this was embarrassing, Cole said. Um, the dog got in the ring. Corbin told him to take it, bend the knee and take a bow. And he told him to shake as, you know, Ziggler and uh, Rude were laughing because they said it was going to be glorious tonight. And I'm sure people were shitting all over this segment as soon as this dog came out. I'm sure they were okay with the, the usual King Corbin stuff, but I'm sure the dog brought it down for everybody. So, yes, the, the dog, and I'm sure people are going to say, who wrote this bullshit? But apparently Fox must love it because they're paying WWE all this money, man. Hey, billion dollars. This is this is the Fox investment, folks. They must love people dressed as dogs. This is this is the new thing. This must be the new thing for WWE. It could look like shit, but they're going to pay him anyways for it, okay? I don't know if it's, of course, I'm sure people are going to say right now, well, well, well Vince McMahon, no, no, no. they're going to be creative, uh, da, 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 the dog shit, uh, uh, Fox paying them all this money. So, uh, that, there you go, folks. The dogs, the dogs are coming, man. The, we got the people dressed as dogs out here now. That's, that's going to be the thing. Uh, one thing, I guess I should say this, because I did say this in a different video, but, uh, WWE didn't mention the WWE backstage thing with CM Punk, which of course they didn't use cult of personality, but their uh, cheap generic WWE 2K music to show the clip of him coming out. Well, I'm sure people are going to say now, will CM Punk shit on SmackDown or Monday Night Raw, or will he just be there to get his paycheck and just say good about WWE, okay? I've already said my feelings on CM Punk. I'm having mixed feelings about it, to be honest, with him being back, which he is under Fox contract. I gotta keep saying this, Fox contract, he's not under... WWE contract, but I'm sure people are gonna say see the same thing or this guy people are just gonna say well He's still technically working somewhat with WWE. He's not working for them. But he's working for Fox He's an analyst which you know 
I'm awful punk being an analyst out there. I have nothing against that. I think he has good commentary, but you know, I've said my piece on this already. I have mixed feelings about CM Punk being back in general. I'm I'm for it. I'm I'm in a way it's like it's like this. He's back. He's not technically back all the way, but he is back in some form of wrestling and I'm sure people thought WWE would have been the last thing on his mind. I'm sure people either thought this guy should have went to AEW or it was always been rumored to be them being in AEW, which I kind of starting to believe a little, but he, I don't know, there's been, you know, they try to say he was in it, but he really wasn't in it and he had to come out saying himself, but you know, like I said, I'm going to watch backstage next week. I will watch it. I'm probably going to be the other time I watch this with him on there because I don't really care about the show in general, but um, I don't know, man. I, I got mixed feelings about it. Because even I'm kind of going like, like okay, all that shit you said. This company, which I like I say, he works for Fox because he's not what that'll be. But hey, this company fired you on your wedding day. And it's, uh, it's a long, long story behind with CM Punk uh, when it comes to this. But I have mixed feelings about this. And I'm sure, you know, people are already going to say he sold out. He sold out. Which, like I said, it's debatable. If you want to go that, it's debatable. But... He is working for Fox, but still, it's on a WWE program show. Like I said, it's better than having that goofball fuck tar Ryan Satin on there. But, um, yeah. But next, Mustafa Ali and, um, or, or DJ in the place. He just took up the place and he shot up the place. But, um, yes, um,. They were tagging to go against Ruben Ziggler, which wasn't actually a bad match. Or Ali G, like there was it, uh, Sasha Baron Corbin, Ali, Ali G. They could have a team name like that. Roman came out, um, pretty much to watch the match. Uh, they pretty much got to the broadcast table. Reigns took out Corbin with a drive-by kick. Pretty much, you know, um, there was a brawl out there. Roman hit Corbin with the spear. Um, Shorty G, Chad Gable hit the Chaos Theory German suplex, and then, uh, Mustafa Ali at the 450, so they still keep their spots, but it was actually a good match despite all the silly bullshit with the dog and everything, which they even showed the dog walking with Corbin again, arguing what's going to happen with Team SmackDown. Corbin says he's going to fix it. I guess the guy in the dog costume will help him fix it too, so that's going to be a thing. There was a new Firefly Funhouse that happened as he was um, talking about the title and he was dressed as a magician. So what do they do with the WWE title? Not give Bray Wyatt a custom or cool looking title. Instead of a red belt, you now have a blue belt version of the title. So no red, all blue. Okay, honestly it still doesn't look good either way. Red, blue, whatever. They're just trying to fit the show, but... Could they have given Bray Wyatt his own custom title? Could they have given him something way better? Yes, yes, they could have. But they didn't, and they came up with this bullshit. So, uh, it's just blue now. It's not red. It's blue. It's SmackDown. So, I, I don't know, man. It's just, it, it, I, swear, I don't know. I just would have kept that damn belt on Raw. I don't know why they even moved it to SmackDown. But, hey, they, they put the WWE Champion back on Raw, and uh, we're going to keep Wyatt on SmackDown. So, we'll, we'll see where this goes. With this belt, but I'm not really a fan of it. Not much of a change. Uh, Braun Strowman, who came out there to face Drew Gulak, a guy that was once to shit on 205, is some serious shooter fighter or on there, some mission specialist. Now he's helped team with the B team, talking about Strowman, that, you know, it's, it's surprising you're still standing out here, and that, you know, this could happen, you know, I should replace Team SmackDown, and then next thing you know, Strowman ended up beating pretty much all three of these guys up, power slamming them. So, yeah, um, Gulak continues to look bad as soon as, as so as the B-team. Caleb Braxton interviewed Biggie and Kofi Kingston as Biggie talked about are the Tiggly Winks something and is Megan, Megan Thee Stallion um, one of the greatest gifts of the earth. Girl can rap, though. Hey, man, she can go. So, I, I mean, I know that much about Megan Thee Stallion, but she can fucking rhyme. Check that shit out. Uh... And then he talked about how the Philadelphia Eagles beat the New England, your New England Patriots and uh, at the Super Bowl. Got a cheap pop, but a big pop out there, too. Talk about Kingston. Kingston says, you know, we're doing this for, um, you know, Xavier Woods to honor him, even though why we have an tag team title match uh, this week. We had one last week. 50-50 booking. Uh, apparently, rematch clauses must be uh, making sense again around this company. We Did we bring the rematch clauses back? Because that's what I'm going to assume. Uh, Daniel Bryan was walking to Sami Zayn and uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. 
pretty much uh, talk, showed up high up. Sammy says, you know, we need an answer now. Like, you know, The Fiend is watching this Miz TV segment tonight. And he says, you need our help, man. Like, you, me, Nakamura. And I guess Cesaro's part of it, too, since they mentioned his name. We can do this. Brian, you know, say he wanted if Zayn had his back. and Because uh, if he had my back, he wouldn't have ran away from The Fiend last week when he had me choking out and stuff. But um, <laughs> I like how Zayn was like, he said, like, listen, I was right behind you, okay? And, um, you know, he doesn't need their help by joining their group. It's kind of like, I, I like how Brian said that, though. Like, remind me of Friday. Say, like, what about the time me, uh, me and Smoke was getting choked out in Red Yard? It, you know, it's Yard stuff. Oh, no, that was different. Get your ass out of here, Red. Uh, Friday clip, if you know what I'm talking about. But, um, kind of going off from that. <laughs> Oh man, he says, uh, he says, no, 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 like, red, man, and Zane pretty much said, uh, you know, Brian was right behind us and everything, and, you know, and Brian said, when you want to join the group, Brian says, I know someone who would be the perfect fit for you guys, Braun Strowman, Zane says, we're artists, we're poets, we only know big, looking, strong guy around, then Strowman showed up, and Sami Zayn, and, uh, pretty much took Nakamura and got the hell out of there, New Day, we're already in the ring. Um, our champion's coming out first. Big E on the ropes. I don't know what he's doing or if he's humping the air, but uh, this guy's always on some shit. Uh, very much going against the Revival. And a very good tag team match, might I add, too. Actually, a really good tag match that they had to kind of get the crowd going there for a second. I enjoyed it, personally, um, the tag match uh, with the New Day and the Revival. But pretty much after the shatter machine happened on Big E and Kingston pretty much came with a dive to break up the pin the undisputed era came out beat up the new day in the revival so yeah um, Red Dragon them out there pretty much beating up all of them but next thing you know Smackdown's back up and har- arrived and then Heavy Machinery Apollo Crews Lucha House Party and Heath Slater pretty much sent the undisputed era from the hills as they said we're the top brand so no one didn't win this tag title match but I'm assuming it'll be a rematch in the future as soon as we get past Survivor Series and we'll see what happens with the Revival after that since they didn't really win or lose anything right here it was just a disqualification by undisputed era so there you go Heavy Machinery remained in the ring until they beat up these two job guys then and, of course, um, you know, Otis does a little dance thing and whatnot. But, uh, you know, heavy machinery is heavy machinery. They interview Bailey in the back with Sasha Banks. Bailey said that, you know, Baszler and Lynch will never think it was an afterthought again after she did to them. And she enjoyed beating people and everything. And that's just going to make her happy crushing Nikki Cross's dreams. Banks said she's going to beat her like let, you know, she, uh, beat her last like last week. And uh, be the countless times, and you know she's gonna complain, continue to play victim. Banks said pretty much, you know, listen, if anybody comes out there, I'm gonna let you handle this. She's gonna be your fight. You're gonna go out there and you're gonna handle this, okay? That's what you're gonna do. Even though anybody could jump at the same time, but he said that you know, you go handle it, pretty much, Bailey. I'm gonna watch you back from up here. I'm not gonna even come out there. Uh, I figured it was going to be interferences then anyways, because yes, Bailey did go against Nikki Cross. But of course, next you know, NXT is back in the building uh, between Shayna Baszler and Team Ripley, basically, of, you know, no Candice LeRae wasn't out there, but yes, Rhea Ripley, Tegan Knox, Dakota Kai, and me and Yim, which is kind of funny, why are they helping Shayna Baszler, aren't, are all these women in the War Games match in the feud with each other right now, couldn't Baszler's own team show up to come help her attack Bailey instead of just finding the opposite team, so, Solidarity Smackdown, uh, there you go, we got, I'm sorry, Solidarity NXT, we gotta forget we're in these fights of feuds right now, cause we all gotta work together against the other team, so, so we gotta forget that at the same time, but, um, I don't know, man, they're just helping her, and, um, kind of strange, Next, you know, Sasha was able to clock um, Baszler in the back until the women surrounded the ring. Next, you know, SmackDown women came out there, including her, including her teammates for uh, Survivor Series. Pretty much challenged them to a match. Eight women tagged then. Right after Sasha, Nikki Cross, Carmella, and Dana Brooks. Not that good of a team for this show. I'll tell you that for the women. Uh, SmackDown side. I went against Ripley, Mia Yama, and Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai. Uh, was the bad match or anything? Uh, I think the most things you could really take from this interesting parts with some people was maybe against Sasha and Ripley, which had a good stare down and them going in with each other. Um, you know, what, what was it though? Um, 
I'm trying to remember the tag match. Uh, wow, this one really blank shifted for a second right there. But yeah, um, match itself is pretty short. Not bad. <laughs> well, you know, I almost forgot what I was about to say. I'm sitting there kind of a little uh, confused right now. I am, I am. But the eight women tag wasn't really going that long either. Like I said, I know who's in the ring from that point. Uh, it ended up with. Uh, who was the last ones? Like, that Carmella. Who took the pinfall in this damn match? Oh, yes, Dakota Kai took the, call f the pinfall from, um, Rhea Ripley. Not Rhea Ripley, uh, Nikki Cross? I don't know. What if it took a neck breaker, though? I can't even tell who was on Sanity and which was not at the time, alright? But, um, yeah, um, match stuff was whatever. Of course, DQ fin not DQ finish. We all won, but then they brought it after and then until the main one where we also got the upper hand over the NXT one. So there you go on that. Um, Dan Bryant was coming out. Uh, pretty much talking about Miz TV. Miz introduced him as his guests and everything. It's all about the LaBelle locking up and stuff. And uh, you being attacked by the Fiend. And uh, pretty much says, oh, what you think? Miz says, you know, he thinks that. Brian's uh, contacts conflicted and everything, and uh, you know the same guy you once was. Miss Raymond Shum. Hmm. Tired, but um, yeah, Miss um. <laughs> wow, I'm starting to lose it out here tonight, but. Yeah, it's through Daniel Bryan and everything, and you know, stop pop the kettle black and everything. Uh, you're not this, you're not that. What are you? You're not the ultra dog anymore. Are you the environmentalist and everything? But Bryan stood up, says, "We're gonna get back to uh, Bray Wyatt in seconds." But first off, your mi your mid TV sucks, which besides surprisingly, people booed at um, they booed at um, fucking Woods. By the way, and he's not that big himself, but uh, they're fighting, you know, making them. That boo, um. Wow, I'm really drawing a blank right here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for losing to the end. I must be getting tired or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, Brian pretty much stood up and said, Miz TV sucks. For some reason, these people booed at Daniel Bryan when his show does suck and everything. And he says, I'm not the same Brian from 10 years ago that led the, uh, the yes movement, you want to call me washed up and everything, but I'm mentally unstable and stuff. Come on, like, I've done a lot of things. I had to overcome odds and stuff. And he told him to shut his mouth, Miz. I don't want to hear it. But he says, you've never been in a position or the passion to have mental un un instability. And I talked about, how he, you know, had the yes movement and kicking someone in the balls, which was AJ Styles, the kind of WWE champion, last year around this time. And, um, you know, Wyatt. He told pretty much talking about why until you know he finally showed up on the screen because he talked about how both of them are very both mentally unstable. You never know what's gonna happen between these two. He doesn't know who controls the fiend until the Firefly Funhouse happened. Why pretty much says hi, Danny, how you doing? And you know we're gonna speak to another person who's not present right now. Here's the third thing: we know why it's happening. Like you know what you did, okay? You were once part of us and you betrayed us, which I'm sure he knows. Um, you know, Bray Wyatt is talking about when it comes to Brian and everything. You know. What it is, all right? You know what you did. He says he's coming for him. He wants payback on Brian. So they went to this box of tools, which he had a horn, a saw, and everything. What does he do? He takes out the universal title, and you know he chants no. The puppets say yes, and then Wyatt says yes several times. Then, which I guess was to get the crowd to go, but it didn't look like it was working uh, against Brian. Um, Brian says he wasn't gonna play any stupid puppet games with Wyatt, but. He is willing to manipulate people. I knows that. And he's going to fight and everything for the, you know, he asks if Wyatt say he wants to fight or should it be for the Universal Championship. Wyatt pretty much said yes several times then. Yes, yes, yes. Just more crazy. Miz announced Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend for the, the uh, Universal title of Survivor Series. Not a lot of build to this match because you only got one more build next week for Saturday, for, you know, next week for the shows. For Survivor Series weekend, which is going to be a long week over here in Chicago, because they will be here four days at the All-State Arena. Raw, SmackDown, Survivor Series, and NXT TakeOver. So they're going to be around hanging in this town in the neck of the woods for the next few days, I will say that. Um, yeah, that's what's going to happen there. 
But I just wish the crowd was a little bit more excited to see hear about this match. I don't think they were because now there's been a lot of build to it in general. And they've only had at least, what, two weeks of build now at this point? And this is the go-home show next week. I wish they would have focused on this a long time ago. Or you could have waited off on this. But it's like they have to do this match at Survivor Series for some reason. And I'm sure this feud will continue on in my opinion. But... I guess we will see what goes from there. Other than that, SmackDown was very up and down to me. If you ask me, of course, the first, first half was pretty bad. Quarter with the dogs. He's got those big old dogs out there. Uh, you know, dog noises. The best thing was probably on it was maybe the Brian and uh, Miz TV segment with, uh, you know, Wyatt and stuff. Because things were intriguing. I don't know how Miz can make matches with Survivor Series now. Because I honestly don't know what he does other than be a walking billboard at this point. What else? But the rest of the show isn't bad. Of course, we saw NXT invasions from the industry era and the women of NXT. Um, I thought that tag match with the Revival knew they were pretty good, and, you know, until, um, you know, Undisputed the era came out. So not a lot of bad matches. I will say that some questionable segments here and there, but I would say bad matches in all the way. But yeah, that's your two-hour show for you. I'll give it that. Uh, but I don't know, man. Smackdown, Smackdown. But it's hard to take the show seriously when you got the dancing or dog with Roman. Like, he's a dog. Uh, it's the big dog. So, hey, we talked about dogs last week with Corbin's promo, Corbin's promo with uh, Pooper Scoopers. How do we outdo ourselves this week? Let's put the, more the dogs in there. Let's bring a guy in a dog suit. Let's make more dog noises. Let's make fun of him. So th that's the dog in them for him, okay? That's the dog for the WWE there, all right? It's the D-O-double-G. But. Mm. Yeah, that's what I can uh, really say for the dog and stuff. But yeah, other than that, I think that's everything I've said. Let's do this show from SmackDown tonight, to be honest. Uh. Yeah, I think I probably said every match on here. So, yeah. Other than that, I'm going to roll from here. Comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about SmackDown tonight. You know it's me. It's me. HWD coming in news and reviews. Probably on Twitter at Hood at Night 890. I will see you guys later. I'm out of here. Peace out. Tell me what you thought about SmackDown tonight.